Hello, everybody. We got a surprise live stream. Uh, Harry Dent has been on television talking about uh, the way that the stock market's going to crash to zero. And well, Bitcoin's going to crash to zero, but the stock market's going to do a very, very heavy dip. How, how big a dip do you think? Well, I'm looking at 80 to 90 percent for like the S&P right. and things like the NASDAQ, very similar to 29 to 32. All right. So for you guys that aren't old enough to know what happened in 29 to 32, I, I think that was the, the start of the Great Depression. When people were jumping out of windows during the stock market crash then. I'm not sure if it was the start of the Great Depression, but the it, timing it was, was close. It was actually the stock market always leads, so it peaked in uh, late 29. The Great Depression literally started around January 1930, so it was the beginning of the highest unemployment and biggest downturn in U.S. history. So... I guess uh, if you want to tell the audience a little bit about yourself, um, that'd be cool. Yeah, you know, I, I'm an a accidental economist. Uh, I, I started taking economics in school because I was in, I, I liked cycles and stuff when I was young, but I, uh, economics was useless. I mean, I, I couldn't find anything useful, so I ended up listening to my father's business friends and taking accounting and finance. Then I went to Harvard Business School and took marketing and business strategy and basically studied everything in business um, and ended up coming up after that uh, in, in research, especially for my new venture clients. I, I consulted the Bain & Company to Fortune 100 companies for the first few years of my career, but I learned the most when I started consulting to entrepreneurial companies when I moved to California because entrepreneurs are always seeing and creating the future. And I found out myself, I'm an entrepreneur. I didn't see myself as an entrepreneur back then. So I created a whole new set of economic indicators that revolve around people and technologies for crying out loud and not central banks and government policies and stuff. Which do, do, you tell, do you tell people what the indicators are or are they proprietary? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, the first one, the first breakthrough I got was in 1988, I already had it, but I didn't have it crystallized, a 46 year lag on the birth index in any developed country, um, adjusted for immigration, which I have to do in the US and countries with high immigration, for the peak in spending. Age 46 is the peak in spending of the average person in this country. It's now 47, but back then in, in the 80s it was 46. That told me that Japan was about to collapse you know, in, in the 90s, U.S. and Europe were going to have a much greater boom when everybody thought they were has been. I mean, it just changed my perspective on everything because the baby boom, the largest generation in history, was just entering the workforce in the early 80s in mass. And we're going to cause this very predictable boom that nobody saw. So that was my first breakthrough. And literally within a year of that, I figured out, oh, guess what? Inflation, of all things, is also caused by people. Because young people are the most expensive people in our economy, the cost to raise them, incorporate them in the workforce, educate them, all this other stuff. So I found that labor force entry was the greatest generator of inflation, something no economist would ever even think possible, and it works like a charm. So, so those two indicators allow me to generate a four-season cycle of booms and busts in generations, of modestly rising inflation then high inflation and that occurred with the baby boomers peak workforce entry in 1980 and then falling inflation a fall bubble boom and then a winter season which we've been in since 2008 you just wouldn't know it because they printed so much money to cover it up so i think what i'm saying is we're going to know it soon that they put off the 2008 crisis was the beginning of the winter season like 29 to 32 uh, was back then in the 30s and should have been, but they they decided to stop it and print money, stop the debt deleveraging, all the normal things that happen in winter to make us more efficient again and get all the excesses of a bubble out of our economy. Now we're in an even bigger bubble that's going to crash even bigger. So so uh, for people who want to know more at harrydent.com, I've got a free weekly newsletter so people can get to know me better because I'm telling everything I say goes counter to economics and counter what economists are saying and, con and counter to what people are saying now. But the truth is I'm the only, <laughs> I think the only objective person out there because I'm not in the economics profession and I'm not, I, I'm, I, you know, I have my own newsletter, my own business and I, and I don't behold to anybody 
and I can just say what I want. No, but nobody in Wall Street can actually say what they want if they want to. So that's where I come from. Whole new so indicators. Have you, have you... All about people, which means people like you can understand them. Well, I'm able to understand a lot of pretty cool stuff. Have you uh, have you ever got one of these predictions right in the past? I mean, if they put you on TV, I assume so. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, the big ones we we've nailed almost all of them. My my biggest problem, Richard, to be very honest, since they started printing money nonstop in late 2008. And basically, the central banks took over the economy and just blasted out the natural cycles. It's been much harder for me. I'm, I'm only kind of catching up now to how to incorporate all this stimulus and measure when it's having diminishing returns. But the biggest calls I made were in the late 80s, 1989. I came in my first book and said, Japan is going to collapse in the 90s. And back then, Japan looked like China today. The up and coming country could do no wrong. They were urbanizing. They were catching up, taking over U.S. And, and European industries. And just, you know, and I said, no, I'm sorry. They're at the peak of their demographic wave, the baby boom there, which came earlier. And the U.S. and Europe are just getting into it. So we're going to have the big boom in the 90s and they're going to collapse. Right. And, and I was predicting a Dow of 10,000 by 2000. And that's when it was two to three thousand. And people said, Harry, you are a certified nut. So, so that so, was the first big one. So the two. I think the two most productive things I could do is one, try and tease out why you think everything's going to crash. And then I'll play devil's advocate. I think that's the best way to go. So, you know, let's, let's say, let's assume everything that you say is right for fun and, and stock market's going to drop 80 or 90%. I've heard you say, or at least I've seen in the titles of other videos that you've been on that you say Bitcoin's going to go to zero. No, not to zero. Now, now, I look at Bitcoin differently than most people. It is not an inflation hedge. You want an inflation hedge, you get gold. And I, inflation is the wrong thing to hedge against in this winter season, by the way, which is deflationary. It is not a safe haven. You want a safe haven? Buy a 30-year treasury bond that will not default no matter what and will benefit from deflation and falling interest rates. What Bitcoin is, much more important, it's the harbinger of a whole new technology cycle, which I call it Internet 2.0. Internet was the first cycle for how to distribute information bottoms up around the world efficiently. Bitcoin and blockchain, more importantly, are about the digitization of all financial assets and money. That is more important than information, if you can calculate it, especially in monetary terms. So I see it in its early stages, like the dot coms. Why do I think Bitcoin's going to crash? Because it's bubbled up out of nothing, and it's not really worth that much yet. But it is the potential standard for a whole new digital blockchain version of money, and 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 a whole different way of valuing and 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 monitoring and trading and and dealing with financial assets, which everybody has to do. And so it is the next big thing. I see it literally, Richard following the internet, the dot-com surgeons, which bubbled up into early 2000, crashed, including Amazon. You see Amazon today, right? Is it a great company? Is, is it dominate the world? It was a yeah. new emerging country, company. It bubbled up to 136 from six in that bubble and then crashed 95% back to six. Now it's at 3,500 or whatever, okay? I <laughs> see Bitcoin and blockchain on that same trajectory Early stage bubble, which, by the way, for me, confirms this is the next big thing. Biotech and other major new technology, you have 3D printing, just name them all. None of them have bubbled like Bitcoin and blockchain. Only the Internet and dot-com stocks bubbled that much, which was saying they were the next big thing. What most people didn't expect, if you don't study cycles like me and technologies and how they emerge, is that first bubble will get overvalued tremendously because people see the future and not realize it's going to take 10 to 20 years to get there. So, so Bitcoin's think, about to crash back to maybe three, four, five thousand, and then go to half a million or more. That's so that's what I see. I would, I would say that historically, every 10 years or so, you get a dip in the stock market, yeah. and cycles do exist. But those cycles, every 40 years, you get much bigger ones. Look at that one. Very well, sure. even more you, clear. Which is also why you get the rioting in the streets as well, because the kids forget how shitty things can be. 
whereas right. the people that have been to war enjoy their peace a little bit more than those that have never seen it get bad. So I, I understand the, the super cycles concept and the generational effect that is, you know, wrought upon the economy. So my, the problem I have with bears in general is that one, they're all extinct. The only people that have made it in the market. Exactly. That's why right. you should listen to the last few standing. That's exactly <laughs> what bubbles do. Extinguish all the bears till there's not one left, and then they crash and take everybody down on the Titanic. That's exactly the insight. You wouldn't expect many bears to be surviving at this point. If you well, did, you'd be, you'd be saying the bubble's not over yet, if you understand bubbles. Well, the, the thing is, so everything that you're saying can be... You're not trading markets against a real currency. You're trading markets against a fake currency, which is backed by nothing. Because the trading pair that you're and trading, Bitcoin is backed by what? What is Bitcoin backed by? Well, the same thing that all the other markets. You're are saying that's a true currency, fool. right? I, I'm assuming. No, no, they, they're What's all it backed by. It's an invisible coin backed by not even yes, just gold like the has dollar. Some intrinsic value. Well, gold is down from ten years ago, today. Yeah, and I've been predicting that. By the way, I'm a gold bear. Okay. Well, then you got wrecked this year, but it's back down from 10 years ago. I don't I mean, predict it every day, Richard. Don't hold no, me to stupid year. stuff. Like, don't even think of saying something stupid like that to me. doesn't mean I'm bearish every week, every month. Well, just tell me your time frame. I've been telling you, well, people frame. say gold. They think we're going to have an inflation crisis out of printing endless money. And I'm saying no. The printing is to offset deflation, and gold is an inflation hedge, not a deflation hedge. That's why I'm bearish on gold, and gold is going to go lower in the next few years. Mark so, my words on that. That's what I'll leave sure. it Sure. Like, I, I, I think Warren Buffett gets a lot of things right. And one of the things that he gets like right... Like what? Like well, what? <laughs> he's occasionally the richest guy in the world, which isn't Yeah, he bad. started investing in 74 in a nutless monkey. I hate to say it could have made almost as much money if you started <laughs> then. But no one did. I mean... That he, was at the bottom of the stock market of our entire lifetimes. Whoever started there, which he did, that's when he really started investing seriously, would have done very, very well just with any bullish bias. I'm not saying he's a not, good investor. He but I don't it. say he's the fountain of wisdom. I don't think he understands anything about economics and cycles. Well, Nothing. He doubled the S&P 500's returns for 40 years. But he's a value investor. That's, that's what's good about him. Yeah. And so, so I, I don't do the hero worship thing. I just pick the, the snippets that I think are useful. So in this case, the snippet that I think is useful is that if, if you take all of the world's productive assets and you divide up their ownership amongst people, and then that's like one universe, and then you have this other universe where you take up all the world's productive assets, and then you add, quote, active managers that try and derive extra yield somehow magically, the productive stuff is still just the productive stuff and the people that own it are still just the people that own it. And that extra class of people pretending to add value doesn't actually add any value. Right. And so his statement was that non-actively managed index funds would outperform actively managed funds over 10 years. And, and he made do. like a million dollar bet on it and he was right. Yeah. And, and so it's, for me, it's the same with health insurance. Health insurance providers do not treat anyone. They are not doctors. They do not treat you. What they do is steal a third of the money that could have been used for treatment for bureaucracy. They don't do a fucking thing. They don't develop new medicine. They don't deploy new medicine. Everything sucks because it exists. So if well, we they're could... there if you need an extreme amount of money, which most people don't. And you know how much savings most people have, don't you? That's, that's well, the only thing they provide. I agree with it. It's not, it's not enough compared to what yeah that they're taking so, the so my point is that like that. there's these ways to make systems more efficient by cutting out people that pretend they're doing yep. work but they're really not doing anything and so yep. insurance companies are one of those things and uh some of finance is that the active management is is that by by yep. and large yeah we know. would be just fine with no active management i agree with sure. you it doesn't it, add any real value long term well particularly when you've got a democratization of signals as you have said i mean you became i mean yeah you went to harvard so you're a pretty smart dude but you still are an armchair became an economist just because you had to because everyone else was so bad at it 
Yeah. I mean, economists, if you want to talk about people that can't make any damn money in the market, economists cannot make any money in the market. They, they get my, wrecked my left and right. My Richard never had sex, never run a business. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> They're smart people, but, that, but those two things tell you why they don't understand real life. Yeah, but they Consumers think they drive do. our economy. They wouldn't know a consumer if they fell on them. Yeah, I hear you. So, so, and so the, 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 the point that I'm getting to is when the government is willing to do something that they've never done before, which is actual health, like people have always rumored like, oh, you know, helicopter money, helicopter money. We actually have helicopter money now. They're actually, they've inflated the M2, which is a measurement of free capital in the system, the actual, the kind of dollars that are available. 80% of all dollars that exist were printed in the last year or two. It's a big deal. And so when that money, that money that's being printed has to land somewhere, period. And it's landing. So the rich are going to get richer. The poor are going to get poorer. Your wages aren't going to go up. You're going to lose your jobs. You know, you know where it's landing. It's not going into the economy. It's not. No, it's going into, GDP it's going into anything it's you going can invest in. It's going into financial in. right. assets, which you're right, are owned yep. 80 some percent by the top 10 percent and mostly by the top 0.1 to 1 percent you're yeah. exactly right it yep. makes the rich richer adds nothing to the economy other than they're spending more money right and they're then getting the top more 10 percent right. are almost 40 percent of gdp so they're more than they yeah. sound like spending other than that wealth effect on spending and that's artificial it's not you're right it's not adding anything that's why bubbles need to burst they're unproductive uses and divergence of money and everybody's in the stock market everybody's a day trader now everybody's a real estate flipper those are not productive assets and guess what i've got a measure for what you're saying richard and you, i'm going to give it to you afterwards okay money velocity mm -hmm. money velocity tells you when money's being invested productively and then reinvested and when it's not and it's going more into unproductive investments or speculation guess how long money velocity has been crashing in most countries around the world well, since the mid to late nineteen nineties, since all these bubbles started. Well, it's a function of interest rate. So when they rate, I mean, they literally raise interest rates to reduce money velocity, to make it harder to get money, to lower prices, so prices don't rise. So, like, if if, if no, 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 I, I'm disagree with you. It's actually the opposite. They have pushed interest rates increasingly lower, lower, lower. So money's free. So when something's free, it gets abused. People just speculate right. with it. It's easy. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like the, the lower I'm, interest rates have caused that, not well, higher. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Money velocity to is slow it totally down. consistent with falling interest rates artificially below what inflation yeah. rates would say I, they I should. I agree be, with everything, which you is said. easily measured. Yes, I agree with all that. I was saying that when the Fed wants to stop and slow down the money velocity to slow down rising prices. They increase interest rates to suck money out of the economy to get it locked yeah. into savings accounts. And they do the opposite when they want to flood the, the market with activity to try and make up for a pandemic or whatever they feel like they need to make up for. Then they reduce interest rates to zero and in some countries negative, which is hilarious. So you-, you And, and then let, me, let me just go there. That is what I would describe as the maybe single most unproductive function in the entire economy. I think we would do just fine with no central banks, period, except emergency funds when you get in a real crisis short term. All they do is tinker with the economy and, and jerk people around and do all this stuff and add not only yeah. no value, but more volatility, but, which actually takes value out. But there's hidden, there's hidden upside to the American populace from this. So when like America, what? well, when America is the reserve currency of the world and has debt and trade imbalances with other countries, when they devalue the dollars that they owe other people, they just pay them back with fake money. And then we get more for nothing. Like when the Asians are willing to work eight out, you know, 16 hours a day, six days a week, someone benefits from that. And it's everyone else that's getting their products, iPhone users, right? So like the first world and the rich people is sucking the life out of the poor people in the third world through this inflationary tactics. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Everything, if you're a high school graduate and you want to buy your house, you're fucked. You're not going to ever be able to buy a house, ever. Exactly. Because... Another good reason for a bubble to burst. <clears throat> so, it's, so the millennials will be able to afford to buy a house in the future. They have no chance of making yeah. money on stocks at these rates or buying a house. 
and making. I money. just I just don't think they're going to let it burst. I think they'd rather see the the value of the dollar. Okay, Richard. Then, then let's let's play this forward. Okay, the bubble mm-hmm. keeps going up, up, up. Have you sure. noticed the trajectory of it? It's called exponential. Mm-hmm. You think the market can double and double and double yep. and double so that it's worth? Um, t- oh, right now, financial assets. By the way, I just quote you a real number: mm-hmm. six point five times global GDP. Stocks, bonds, and real estate. Yeah, sure. Six point five times. You know what normal is? You know, Maybe. you know that's the Warren Buffett indicator you're quoting, right? <laughs> uh, it's one of them. Yeah, but it's called the Warren Buffett indicator: the ratio of stock prices to GDP. I don't care, Richard. <laughs> I don't care. You want to give him all the credit? You want to listen to him? He's well, going to no, tell you. I don't. He doesn't understand crypto. Buying U.S. large cap stocks, and he's going to be wronger than rain. I will say that the day if I'm wrong, tar and feather me. He's gotten some things okay? wrong. That's what I'm sure. saying. Yeah, you want to listen to him. He's been so successful so long, he has no possible perhaps, a, a way to have perspective. Success makes you complacent. Failure is the way people learn the fastest. I don't know if you've learned that, but I've certainly learned more from my ass kicking than my ass kissing <laughs> in life, okay? I think I think it might be like or a, not. a valley. The like audience can agree or not with me on that one. So it's, we agree on... So we agree on almost everything so Except far. Except you say you can keep a bubble going forever. Do you ever seen a bubble that they kept going forever? Yeah. You know, yes. in 1929, the head economist said we're at the, a permanent plateau of prosperity, and that's exactly when it peaked and well, crashed. Eighty nine percent. I listen. I I'm in. I I bought. Bit, I mined Bitcoin full block solo with no pool. Fifty block. Fifty Bitcoin block rewards on my computer, alone, when it was fifty cents. It went up 5 million X, 5 million times, 5 million fold, 500 million percent. And if it keeps percent. doing that in the same time periods, it'll be worth more than, than not only the right. earth, but yeah. all the planetary system. And I think at some point yep. that'll be unsane, sustainable. Do you agree with that? I, I think but that's At some point, exponential growth yeah. like that will be unsustainable. Unless, unless you're unless just looking... What? Unless you're looking at the dollar price chart and the dollar is worth very little. I don't care about the dollar. The dollar doesn't make a difference either. The real economy does, and you can measure that in anything you want. Okay. So, gold is not the best measure. The gold sucks. Like gold, gold yeah. is down lower now than it was. Bitcoin's 10 years ago. not the best measure either because it's an exponential growing early stage thing that's the most volatile single asset on the earth. You ca- no. you measure anything against that, you got to be crazy. I'm a big fan of gold, Bitcoin, and blockchain. It's just early stage. You so, know? so let's look at it. Let's look at it differently. So let's let's say let's say that all of this is just a fake Rube Goldberg machine. All of finance. Totally fake. The, well, the, the I'm just financial saying, asset part. Experiment. Hey, let's step back, Richard. Our productive capacity, the cars we're producing, the computers, mm-hmm. the software, none of this is fake, okay? Some of it's right. been leveraged more than it should, which means we got overcapacity. But but it's the financial assets that are fake, like sure. women that go in and get you-know-what operation, okay? Yeah, That's what's it. fake. All we have to do is take out this financial asset bubble that's everybody in love with because it's given them something for nothing for the last 20 years and made everybody more wealthy, even Homer Simpson a bit. Nobody wants to give up the very thing that is in the way of the next generation having a standard of living and growing like the baby boom. so, So what I'm saying is that you have two options available to you. You can complain as loudly as you can that the powers that be are making decisions that cause misinvestment and mal investment by yeah, artificially no low good. credit. Yeah. And I agree with you and I don't think they give a shit or you can realize, yeah, they don't give a shit. And so how can I just take advantage of the system, which is unfair? It makes a poor, poor, it makes a rich, richer. How can I take advantage of that system? And I think that being long in general annihilates being short. And and so we, okay, if, let let we're gonna take a bet right now, and you are sure. gonna both come together right. at the end of 2022 and decide who's right. We're gonna make a bet right now. I All bet right. this financial asset bubble is gonna burst, and if you buy anything, stocks, junk bonds, real estate, anything, you're gonna mm-hmm. be down in the next two years, and you're saying you can't go wrong. You're gonna be up. Let's make that well, bet. Let's, well, let's right pick now. an asset, and, a, and let's pick a price chart and pick a date. stocks. Pick the Nasdaq. So how about that? This piece so about fourteen thousand. Mm, can we do the S and P five hundred like the yeah, spy? Yeah, okay, thirty nine fifty recent right. 
So, what do you say it's going to be two years from now? Well, my, the end my, of 2022. My side of the bet should be easier because you're saying 80, 90% drop, right? Yeah. So I'll just say uh, where it is now or higher. Well, that's pretty cheap if you're saying all you can't go wrong being long. You should be long. Why would you be long if you're going to earn nothing? Why not be in cash if you're going to earn nothing? It'd well, be safe. You have I mean, no risk. You're claiming 80, 90% percent drop. You're not, you're not an investment manager. I can you, tell from dog. You, under, you understand that saying it's going to be the same place in one year is actually bearish, right? It usually is up yeah. much higher. That's what I'm saying. That You're saying long's the place to be. If I thought it's going to be the same place in one year and knowing not, how highly overvalued it is, I'd rather be in cash knowing that's going to be closer to the same place in one year. Not knowing stocks is just a guess. Well, I mean, look. We can edit the bet however you want. My, my thesis is basically this. It's very easy to point out that finance is fucked up. It's very easy to point out that bad decisions are being made. It's very easy to point out that negative interest rates are insane. It's very easy to point out how fucked up everything is. And it's great. Everything's fucked up. We know everything's fucked up. Okay, now how do we personally profit on that? And that's a little bit harder. Because if you go short, you will get fucking annihilated. You will get wicked out. The market will stay irrational longer than you I can stay I am saying solvent. if you go long over the next two years, your chances are 10 times more being annihilated than being short. I'm not telling most people, you know, I'm not telling people to short the stock market, okay? Okay. Because that's beyond most people's risk tolerance. And, and, and down markets are more volatile than up markets and faster, okay? Most people aren't okay. good at drawing fast gunslingers, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm saying buy a 30-year treasury bond, lock in these 2% plus rates before they go to near zero in the next few years in a deflationary crash. They went from 4% down to 2% in the 30s. In that crash, they're going to go from 2% down to near zero. In this one, you can make 40% on that 30-year treasury bond in something that's going to pay you that interest and be considered safe. Did you say you can make 40% on it? No what. You can make 40% on it, you say? I don't know how T-bills trade. I, I always thought T-bills were it's like... It's not T-bills. It's a 30-year. The longer you lock in a rate... See, bonds, long-term bonds go up when rates fall. It's the opposite of stock. You know, people don't... You always have to explain that to people. Okay. A bond, you buy a 2% bond and then other bonds go down to near zero. Oh, your 2% bond looks like, oh my God, let me have that, baby. I'll pay you double the price. That's what happens. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, in my, I know that if the dollar goes down in value, in general, I would prefer to be tied to things that aren't going down in value, but you found an instrument which... And, and, and give, when, give me your rational, why is the dollar going to go down? Do you know that in the 2008 crash when everything fell apart, you know what one currency in the world and the developed countries went up? Do you know? In 2008? The dollar, because it's not a great currency. It's the best house in a bad right. neighborhood. Yeah, sure. Europe has printed way more money than us. Japan, way, way more money than them. Our demographics, even though slowing over time, are stronger than either of them. And Japan's the weakness. And China is the worst over-investor, waster of money in the entire world today. We're the best house in a bad neighborhood. If I had to own one currency, it'd be the U.S. dollar and maybe some uh, New Zealand and Sweden and Australian. Would so, not be Europe or Japan or China. Where, where are you going to go if you don't want to be in the U.S. dollar? So it's it's hard it's hard for me to, to understand your investment thesis. So I'll try and, try and clarify it so I get it better. Because the currencies do not have a value. They trade relative to each other. Mm -hmm. I just gave you my thesis. We're the best house in a well, bad neighborhood. Right. But so everybody's in trouble. Everybody's over in debt. Everybody's so overstimulated, think, which think, always ends up in a crash. We're the best house out mm -hmm. of those. Do so you think interest rates should be higher? Go down. Our stocks are going to go down in do our you, real estate. Do you think they should quit printing as much money as they are? Yeah, as soon as they do, bam, this thing will be over. You, you know what they did that? They just did a little and we had the repo crisis overnight. Not mm -hmm. enough money for banks. Oh, yeah, we're fine. We're over this crisis. No, as soon as they stopped, the monetary hose to keep this bubble going, it caved. They know they can't, Richard. That's why they won't. They tried it in 2017, 18, and they got their ass kicked. Well, I mean, and then COVID. In, so in theory, they, they, if they, they should could... stop, it's just going to cut off the bubble sooner and make it less, but they're not going to stop. It, they cannot so, stop. They're going to have to go till this blow. 
I so think it's blowing potentially right now. So if, let, let me see and, if I get your, your, your playbook right. You think that at some point they can't lower interest rates anymore and then they can't increase M2 anymore. And then they can't push all the asset prices higher. So then it tastes blood in the water. Then the markets crash. Right. Because the markets are crashing, what that means is that people are selling stock for dollars and then dollars become rare. And then the dollar goes up in value, similar to how it did in the 2008, 2009 crash. And when the dollar becomes stronger, it actually pushes the value of anything denominated in the dollar down, such as gold or crypto or anything else. So that, am I getting your exports, playbook? And it hurts our exports overseas, mm -hmm. which are already right. going to be. But it makes our imports cheaper. Yeah. Um, so, so that's the playbook. That's like kind of what you think is going to happen, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay. part of it. It's just so, that. So the way that you think is a good way to profit on that situation is by buying 30-year T-bills. Treasury bonds. Treasury bonds. T-bills are 30-day 30 okay. 30 to 90-day. They're right. short, six months. Mm -hmm. they, they're like cash. They're not going to vary hardly at all. 30-year right. Treasury bonds are the safest and the longest-term bonds you can buy. In a downturn, money will go to safety, safe haven, which is not gold, because gold did not prove to be the safe mm -hmm. haven last time, yeah. already flagging ahead of this crisis this time, more than it should even, um, with all this money printing. So it's the, so the it, it... longest-term bond in the safest large currency that's why I want it. And so, when rates go down because of deflation, which they will, there won't be any more inflation. There'll only be deflation or zero inflation. Then that bond will be worth more locking in two point, let's say 2% today over 30 years when the best you can get a year or two from now is 0.4% is my guess. Yeah. So it's, so to me, to me, like it's, it's odd to me that you think they're, it's very odd that as someone that thinks everything is going to crash, that their way to profit is by buying an instrument that pays them dollars. Could work. I guess it could work. I would go check and the charts. You did or... miss the part that I said we're the best house and a bad neighbor, and I'd rather sure. have a dollar than a euro or a yen or a yuan. Did you miss that part? Yeah. Look, I, I That's I, why I, think... I said it. I know you don't understand. That's fine. I'm saying no, I, the I get dollar... It. If you have to pick a major currency and, and call me wrong two years from now, I don't mind being called wrong. I have been before. I'm saying the dollar is the best place to be and the longest term safest of those bonds in a crisis is the best place to be. Everything else, all types of risk bonds, all real estate, especially high end and ur highly urban, all stocks will go down. Every other financial asset will go down except these high stuff. A triple A corporate bond would also be a good place to be. That's it in my scenario. Yeah. Just so for a I, couple of years. I would so if we're if we're using a fractal of the, the two thousand and eight dump, then if your thirty year treasury bonds profited in that scenario, I'd be Which willing to guess they would do the same again. Yeah. Uh, personally I would try and look for something that went up in a, so if it's a seesaw and the markets are going down and the dollar is going up, personally, I would try and find something else that would go up that wasn't the dollar because I don't like something that people can print well, out Well, that's air. easy. If you don't like the dollar or currency, then you buy a global stock portfolio. You short a global stock portfolio or a global index. <laughs> So I try to explain that shorting Bonds will go down. Whether we have an inflationary outcome is, is the gold bugs predict or a deflationary as I predict more like the thirties, either way, stocks will go down. Stocks don't like any crisis, any downturn in the economy. They don't like high inflation. They hate deflation. So the, the best place to make money in a downturn, it's just more risky than holding a 30 year treasury bond to me for everyday people would be to simply be short stocks See, it it feels, just short it Betting all, on stocks all, going down you can let me exp, to the listeners let me tell you how shorting how dangerous shorting is bitcoin went up five million x a lot of people shorted it they all lost everything because your downside is infinite so if you had bought bitcoin at a dollar and sold it at fifty thousand, you made fifty thousand bucks but if you had shorted bitcoin at fifty thousand, it wrote it down to a dollar which it never went to 
you'd only have made. Richard, that's crazy. Just stop that logic. That means if you held it forever. I'm not saying hold any of this forever. I wouldn't even hold it a couple months if something doesn't but changes in the wrong you're, way. You're looking you at are a short for a period of time. Stocks have gone up so much. The more any asset goes up, the less it can go up just because it's bigger. Anything bigger grows slower than in the early stages. So, so that the parabolas sort of, oh disprove God, that. You could go to zero. That would take forever in stocks today, yeah, but, and I wouldn't be in stocks. The longest I'd be short might be a year or two. Here. I'm I'm saying that if you look at the price chart, the history of all shorts is that they lose all of their money in almost every price chart because they print the money for free. As long as these price charts we're looking at are denominated in dollars, and they're printing the dollars for free. So Even what do he... you, okay, you, you give me, Richard, sure. your recommendation. Let's say I'm right. We're going to have some sort of big downturn. Yes. Just that one assumption. It could yep. be inflation. What is the one thing you would buy, have people buy to make money in a downturn? Stable coins. You buy stable coins. So right now, so well, yeah, because they're tied to the dollar. But so, so wait, you've wait, got... wait, 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 you hate the dollar. Yeah, but they oh, have. Richard, what are you talking about here? You hate the dollar. You don't want anything in dollars or paying in dollars. Yes, but it has advantages that the dollar doesn't have. So when you take a dollar to your bank account, you have uh, probably some taxable income problems, don't you there? Yeah. So, you know, depending on what jurisdiction you live in, it could be the case that if you sold an asset for dollars, maybe you live in a jurisdiction where that's not a taxable event. And then maybe you can just stick that in decentralized finance, which is currently paying, depending on what you're trading, 40% APR because people are borrowing it for leverage to get long. So in, in DeFi and Ethereum, you can take a stable coin and lend it out with just smart contract risk, no other counterparty risk. There's no AML, no KYC, no signup risk, no a global overlord that can be like, that's not your money. We're taking your money. None of that bullshit. That's all solved. So you just do have smart contract risk. You got to make sure you got to hope the code works right. And you can get in between six and 40% per year sitting on your fucking cash with, depending on where you live, maybe no taxes. How, sitting how in long cash. stable coins been around? Four years, maybe. They actually trade Were more volume than Bitcoin when, does. when Bitcoin crashed in 2018? Mm, yeah. Yeah, they were there. How did my first test, and because you could be right about it, this one sounds m more reasonable to me, yeah. how did they do in that crash? Did they did did great. hold their value go up or go down? They're basically always about a dollar. They usually hold their pegs very well. Okay, so so that's a <laughs> way of preserve, not growing your money. You're not going to make money on that. Well, you're, I mean, look, your 6 to 40% a year is good APR. The dollar is going to preserve your money, which which I'll give you is at least a possibility. Yeah. Okay? Now, the reason so I that, tell you. That makes sense, but but yeah. you're not going to make, how are you going to make money? For well, you make 6 to 40% per year APR just for, mm -hmm. for, because what happens is you're putting your stable coins into the lending platform. And then okay. people are borrowing those to sell them for crypto, to get long crypto. And then they get wrecked and liquidated, and then they have to give them back. And then you get your coins back with interest. And so traders, traders being ruined is what allows people that lend out stable coins to be profitable. So, you know, if, if you tried to lend out Bitcoin or Ethereum, you get no interest. You get 0.15% yeah. instead of 6% because, you know, it's harder to get a hold of these stable coins. And right now, more people want to get long because it's a parabola and people love to buy tops. They absolutely love it. They, they hate buying bottoms. They love buying tops. So I, my, if, if you believe that the markets are going to crash, I think getting into stable coins like DAI, which has no counterparty risk, just smart contract risk, or uh, USDC, which does have counterparty risk, they can seize your coins when they want, but you know they've only done it once or twice upon you know, the government commanding them to for some legal thing. Um, and they've got more trading volume than, the, than Bitcoin has. Tether does more trading volume a day than Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. That's how popular they are. So stable coins are actually the most popular cryptocurrencies, even okay, though they're real quickly, not real. Real you say, okay, so you get interest, because that's, that's like a bond, only sounds better. How much yeah. interest you say you can make on that? Depending stable? on the platform that you're in, I mean, right now you're averaging about 7% everywhere. So if you have USDC or DAI and you put it in DeFi right now, you're getting 7% per year. And you can withdraw instantly. It's not locked. So you can you can make six percent APR today and pull it out tomorrow. Now the fees are very yeah, high. That sounds attractive to me. Yeah. Let's say this downturn lasts. The typical crash I'm talking about is two to three years. Mm -hmm. Over two to three years, seven and seven. You could make twenty, thirty percent interest, 
and have something that's not going to fluctuate in value. And then like you can buy the bottom. Yeah, and then you can buy the bottom. So, you, so my, yeah. my, so my belief is that statistically, the likelihood that you called the top top is very low compared to all the things that looked like yeah. tops. That, the that, false that peaks. That is very unlikely to call a top. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'll give you that. And those and those people that get it wrong, if they open any kind of short, they are fucking annihilated. So being in cash, well, well, not, you're not, not going to get an island. No, no, they, hey, Richard, you got to back up. These people are shorting Jesse Livermore or whoever traders on leverage. I'm talking if somebody's going to be short this time, they are unleveraged short in a broad index. Not Yeah, not but you're still, you still lose it all for two X's. You lose all your money in two X's. You're wiped out. Yeah, I'm not but, talking But even about. without leverage, with no leverage, if the market two no X's, leverage. you lose all your money. If you have 0% no, leverage, no, no, you will yes, not. You do. Unless you stay in for 90%, then you'll lose 90% of your money. And anybody right. who stayed in over three years when it goes against you would be an idiot. But, but look, we just did it. When you look at these dips, if you shorted the 20% dump in equities, you're now missing a third of your money with no leverage. If you just shorted with no leverage the bottom of the 20% dump we had, we went up, what, fucking 30 40%? from the dump so you're missing 30 for 40 percent of your money and then you're just where we are now like it's shorting is a terrible way to try and make money get flat with no risk because it's very impossible to get the top top okay this just get is flat I, I and then buy the bottom that. buy the bottom i don't recommend shorting to most people yeah. stocks are even more volatile in downtime um, aggressive people i do if you know what you're doing but um if the reason that's why as I like a 30 year treasury bond, you're getting some interest, not 7%. You're getting a little over two, but you're, this is locked it in for 30 years. And that's where the leverage is if things go down. So now, so when you want to get out of, when you want to get out of your 7% reliably with yep. no little or no downside, yep. that's as good or better. I would agree with you. That's as good or better because even that 30 year treasury bond, if, if rates um, keep going against you, then you're going to lose some money too. Yeah, and so, I, so I if, just if, I think if they can, can keep lock printing. In your value and make seven percent yeah. a year. I think that is an excellent. I just don't know that because I'm not an expert in your area. It's really easy. If you can do that. That's an excellent strategy. I mean, I, I could show you how to do it in ten minutes. It's very easy. You go sign up on an exchange like Bitstamp, Coinbase, Kraken. You buy yourself some USDC, and you 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 can put it on a whole bunch of different platforms. I can walk you through it. It's very easy. And yeah. then when the bottom, when you think the bottom is hit, you can get long if you want, or you can just buy back the spot. And look, Bitcoin's well, well, up. I tell you, I, I hate to say it. I mean, one of the best things in the next boom, just like the internet stocks, are after they got annihilated in 2000, 2002, they were the best investment. Buying Amazon yep. yeah, would, would have been like the one hindsight stock. So if I was into the crypto blockchain thing, and I'm using stable coins or something like that to preserve and make some money in the downturn, I would go, first place I would reinvest is in the leading blockchain crypto arena. Well, I, I mean- Because there's gonna be a lot of, there's gonna be a big shakeout. You, you might- You gotta know, 8,000 coins are not gonna be around in five years. Well, the- <laughs> History says that. The funny thing is, like, so if something has product market fit, it's very likely to stick around. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin has dumped 90%, 80%. There were 100 auto companies that had great product market fit and ended up with four mm -hmm. 20, 30 years later. This, Maybe. Richard, this is just basic business. A lot of new companies enter in an innovative, high-growth industry like this, and they get shaken down to the best for the efficiency of the economy and benefit of consumers and everybody. Yeah. There's nothing wrong but, with that. But I the have... industry can't succeed if it lets every loser stay No, but in. that... Everything's an S curve. So, for instance, MySpace was replaced. Expert on S curve. So yeah. So, MySpace was replaced by Facebook. I'm just saying. MySpace. One of my biggest principles. Mm -hmm. MySpace was replaced by Facebook. Facebook is being replaced by TikTok and would have been replaced by WhatsApp and would have been replaced by Instagram, but they fucking buy them all. So, they're breaking the S curve just by merging and acquisitioning them. So, you know, yes. You do have first mover advantages. Yes, you do have critical mass. Yes, you do have network effect like and Lindy second, effect. I like the second movers. I like a bunch of companies to start and a, and a bunch of them fail, and then somebody smart jumps well, in. Well, there you go. Well, I got, I got great news for you. I invented a second mover. I invented my own X, cryptocurrency. Right? Yeah. It, it went up 352x this year. Then it dipped. It's dipped six times. 80%, 70%, 60%. 
it dips constantly. But that's what happens is people love to buy tops and sell bottoms. And then they just give their money to the people that buy bottoms and sell tops. This is, <laughs> this is one thing that Warren yeah, Buffett the says. Yeah, traders give their money to yeah, the smart. Yeah, yeah, the impatient pay the patient in the markets, all of them. And so Hex basically does that and it pays you. So I told you how to make yield on stable coins. Hex pays you yield, but it's not a stable coin. So the average yield in Hex, it's, it's the first economic instrument in the world ever where people are locking up millions of dollars for 15 years at a time and they cannot get out. So if you buy your 30 year uh, bond, you can sell it. You can get the fuck out. You're not in for 30 years. But if you lock up your hex for 15 years, you are locked for the 15 years, unless you want to lose a lot of money. If you want to lose a lot of money, then you can end your stake early. So if you end it at half the time, you lose all your interest, but you keep your principal. And if you end it at less than half the time, you get murdered with fees and penalties and it benefits all the other stakers. So I took the time deposit in the bank and I just copied its parameters and I put them on the blockchain. So if you look at your bank and you look at CDs, they pay you 20% more interest every extra year longer that you lock. I just copied those parameters. I said, okay, in Hex, we're going to have a constant rate of inflation, just like Bitcoin does. So right now, Bitcoin inflates at like 1.89, something like that. In the, 20, in the 10 years that existed before that, when it went from a penny to $20,000, when it went to 20K, its inflation was about 3.89%. So I said, all right, well, let's beat what it did at 20K. Let's go to 3.69. Let's get all of our hyperinflation done within the first year, allocate all the coins. We gave them away for free to Bitcoin holders. You could also transform Ethereum into them back during the first year. Can't do that anymore. And now what we have is something that has a base inflation rate of 3.69%. But it's, it's unlike inflation of Bitcoin. Inflation of Bitcoin, they murder the environment with. It's, it's literally proof of waste that they give to the miners to go destroy the environment to secure the network, which is okay because you end up with a secure network, I guess. But in Hex, we don't have to pay the miners because we're just piggybacking another network that already ate that cost. So Ethereum is already eating the paying the miners cost and they're already having their price harmed by the paying the miners cost. And we're getting all of the security benefits without having to pay the miners block rewards and so inflation in our system is really just like a, a stock split because you're the one getting the extra shares. The only right, people like being diluted. Inflation, are you talking about the number of new coins, new hex that are being created. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Inflation so the coins. only people in our system that get deflated or, you know, diluted are the people that aren't staked. And so in our system, stakers make on average uh, about 38% per year APR in hex. Now, look, if hex goes up a lot, those two multiply and compound and become a very insanely large number. And that's historically what's been happening. But if there's a dip, it could cancel out your, your, your APR gains, wow. right? So, and it's, it's just highly volatile market. But what I know is I've got less negative externalities. I've got a better brand. I've got a better logo. I've got a more dedicated community that's tattooing the logo on their bodies all over the place. There, people just go crazy for it because it, it, it trains people to do the only thing that actually works in investing, which is buying, buying and holding and not getting chopped up, not leverage trading. And imagine how many people sold Bitcoin earlier. Almost everyone in the history of everyone. the world sold their Bitcoin I lower. Know anybody that didn't, it didn't cry. Exactly. And so if they could have been paid to hold, it's just amazing. So Hex is proof of hold and Bitcoin's proof of waste. And just we've got so many positive benefits. You know, people don't realize Bitcoin is actually just an Excel spreadsheet that pollutes the environment to keep it honest and inflates to reward people to keep it honest. That's all it does. You, the only thing you can do with a Bitcoin is send it. It inflates slower to keep it scarce. Sure. It's convergently. So that it, every four years, the inflation drops in half till it converges. And then at some point, you hope there's enough of a fee market to pay for security or you won't have security. Because right now, the majority of security is paid with inflation. And when inflation disappears at some point, people need to pay a lot of fees in order to make the network secure. So yeah, 352 X. And by the way, in Bitcoin terms right now, it's up like 20 X versus Bitcoin. And it's been as high as 142 X. And this is when Bitcoin went up 12 or 15 X in the last year. And Ethereum went up in the last year, 20 X yeah. and Hex did 352 X in a year. So that's what I'm saying. Don't get, don't get wrecked shorting anything. Be conservative, play it safe, make your little bit of interest. And then if the bottom comes, you buy it. And I would also almost say these markets are so crazy and their ability to just print money out of thin air is so strong that 
it could continue for longer than you even thought possible. Well, I mean, it, it already has. The longest yeah. bubble, stock bubbles in history have been five to six years. This is going on 15. nine to 12, depending yeah. on how you measure it. It already has gone. And, and that's been my challenge. How long can this go? Right. And I, I'm just seeing they printed so much, 10 times, you know, it, it, 10 times the rate in the last year as they did in QE before that. That is showing so, they're having to go exponential and they're yep. only getting minor impact from it, which means I think it's getting near the end. But and you're I, right. It is hard to tell the end. Um, because we, we should have already had it. I mean, with the timing, I mean, look, for a conservative oh, yeah. person, the timing was there. COVID. Okay, so now we've got real GDP hit. People are really losing their jobs. It, now we're due for our 10-year dump cycle. It was perfect setup for a huge fucking crash. Perfect setup. And they just printed their way out of it and made new all-time highs because they're just making the money worth less. And people think, oh, well, the inflation is not going that high. Bullshit. It depends on what you want to buy. If you want to buy a computer, it's not that bad. If you want to buy Coca-Cola, it's not that bad. But if you want to buy a fucking house or part of the ownership of a company, it is that fucking bad because everything else is at new all-time highs. So, like, they they did print their way out of that dump. The COVID dump should have been a harsh motherfucker. Oh, they, Everyone's they out of work. Beyond, well, and they added fiscal stimulus for the first time, which is more effective because it's, it it's not going into Agreed. financial assets. It's actually Agreed, going 100%. into consumers and businesses. Yep. If you're going to print money out of thin air, give it to the guys that will really spend it, it, give it at the bottom. Yeah. I agree. Don't put it into financial assets. Yeah, because then the rich just get richer. It's stupid. Yeah. And, how, and then you end up, at some point, you end up with a fucking revolution. At some point. So this money printing. But also, I remind, because, you know, there's more rich people in my newsletter than poor people. (laughs) Um, Guess who I'm saying is going to take it in the shorts? Yeah, Homer Simpson may lose a job in this crisis. These people, a lot of these people are going to lose 90% of their wealth, 50 to 90% of their wealth. They don't think that's possible because they've been in a boom and bubble so long. They confuse brains with a bull market. Remember that phrase. Yeah, brain. look, everyone's a genius in a bull market, man. You could buy any piece of shit, and the number's going to go up. I know this exactly. from cryptocurrency. He's including Warren Buffett, by the way, even though he's better than most. Well, he's I mean, he's sitting on a lot of cash right now. A lot of really smart guys are actually sitting on a lot of cash right now and just watching the market leave them behind and are kind of pissed off be. about it, you know, Anybody because... looking at history and mm-hmm. price earnings ratios and valuations would be increasing cash, even if they think you only have a substantial correction instead of the crash. I'm calling this... Richard, the crash of a lifetime. It's a good like good headline. To 32. It's a good that headline. That was the biggest crash. There hasn't been a crash that big since. And, and wasn't before. There was one close in 1837 to 42. On a, guess what? 90-year cycle. That's where right. we're at right now. 2000, 2002, 30 to 32, 1840 to 42. The most powerful bubble and crash cycle especially for stocks and real estate. So what do you think about that? That's why I'm more bearish than just a correction. Yeah. I mean, so I'm a cycle even guy. if you get, even if you get all the fundamentals, right. And everything that you're saying is right. You just have to be aware that everyone else is nuked. They can just outprint every, every amount of reason that you can think of. They can just outprint it. Dogecoin went up 30 X in a month because Elon Musk just couldn't stop tweeting about it. It has no fundamentals whatsoever. It is a, a coin that is extremely yeah, risky Bitcoin to hold. Bitcoin just went down twenty one percent because Elon Musk tweeted it up, nah, and then it that's just the narrative they pick. So, so what happens is the the market does what the market does. You're, you're going to yeah. get people over leveraged, and they're going to get short called, yeah. and they're going to have to sell, and it's going to dump the price. So, you're always going to get volatile price movements, especially in a vertical parabola, which is basically where we're in now. And usually, we have blow off tops. So. The market, the news people that just write the news, they're like, oh, the price moved. OK, I can get some clicks for that headline like my clicks. This this our title of our thing is stocks are going to zero because that's what people want to fucking click. All right. You want to click some to click bait drama. Shit's going to zero. All right. I'm going to put that in the headline because that's what you guys want in all caps. It's getting gross out there. I don't want to type shit in all caps, but here I am doing it. So the. uh the people that write the news, they just saw a price movement. And then what's the only news they heard of? Oh, Elon Musk said something. Okay, I'll just mush those two together. There's no fucking relation. There's no correlation. There's no, <laughs> you know, we drop down to There's prices. There's short-term correlation. You can't pump up a stock just because Elon Musk said something one day about it. It'll pump it up for a day, then it'll go back down. Yeah. That's it's all just, I'm saying. It, the other thing is like crypto. It's like, oh, we're back to five days ago price. What a crash. 
It's like, yeah, we crashed back to five days ago price. Like, I believe yeah, in the blow-off top. I believe yeah, in the 85. crash off of a huge run. Right. Yes, yeah. I agree. I agree. So I, I believe Bitcoin will crash 85% again because historically it has. Now, if right. there's so much... Right. yeah, I, I, I'm telling you what, my indicator, This could, just because I've studied the dot-com thing and, and bubbles mm-hmm. like this in the early stage, what would be the very, very bullish and all-out sign for me is if for the first time you got, instead of that 84, 85%, which you're right, has already happened several times, yep. if you got a 90% flush crash like Amazon and the internet index did into 2002, that's when I'd say, I, oh, this is when everybody would never want to touch Bitcoin or blockchain again. And I would say, now you load up yeah. the card. So I would be curious to look back historically at what the money printing mindset was back then because if they just well no the 2000 they only printed after the the crash crash. the first time the 2000 crash money printing back then they had they would lower interest rates as the feds already done money printing is like heroin compared to to cocaine or something well back then the gold was the the dollars are backed by an actual gold so they couldn't do it then so you had a standard and 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 you would have been penalized for endless money printing. I'm, I'm talking about the dot-com crash. Because because if it's the case that they just leave the printers running because they're happy to do so for whatever reason, then you could just well, never get a they, crash they, of the same been, depth again. They've been, never. No, they were more forcing down interest rates with Greenspan and beyond. The real money printing only started in late 2008 when 2008 started to look like the next Great Depression, which yeah. I was forecasting would happen. So, so I'm, I'm just saying, unless you see the Fed turn off the money uh, spigot, you might not get as deep dips. You just might not. I mean, that's what we saw with a 20% dip that should have been a 50% dip in COVID. Okay, so, just... so we'll stand on this for two years out. You say if they keep printing money, it'll go up no matter what because they're printing yeah. money. I think, no, I think you're, there, I mean, your best no, case. Listen to me mm-hmm. dem- and then look this back diminishing returns from printing exponentially more money. You don't get less and less out of it until the consequences of having so much money float around, like GameStop going from 482 to 110 in one day. That's, that's just a that's pump and dump. Tiny that's a pump and dump that group. That wouldn't happen in an economy that wasn't on crack with so much money floating around. I, I agree. Look, I think it's overheated. But the question is, how much smaller are the dips due to insane money printing? And we okay. have evidence that the let, dips let, are smaller. Richard, I, I'm just going to have to keep giving you facts here, okay? Because I do all what right. I do. You know what you know 100 <laughs> times me. You know, I don't know hex from dex, okay? Yeah, sorry. Right. Or spew from do, okay? What has been happening since our first real bubble peak in January of 2018? If you look at the charts, every, every boom has taken us to a new high and every crash, every one of them to a new low. You know what that next new low is? If this is a, just a peak and there's just a correction coming? 2100 on the S&P 500, almost 50% down. Are that we looking at different charts? We don't two, make new lows. Three months because the market gets more unstable the more you blow it up and create all this leverage. It doesn't get more stable, it gets more unstable. But we don't make new lows. We never make new lows. I'm looking at the chart now. The chart you're, went. You're blind. January 2018. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking at the spy. S&P like, what ticker 500. do you want me to look at? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. So January in 2018. crashed about 12% into February. Quick crash. And then yeah. it went up to a new high, right? Let me look on trading view, dude. Give me a sec. This... I wish I could throw this up there. You're, you're not reading the chart right. I can tell you 100% sure. Since then, we have the market's I mean, gone. The spy chart just is a fucking. Every time. No. The last <laughs> new low. Get, get Richard, when was it? When was the last okay. new low? Here. 2190 to be exact on the s p 500 so, march 23rd of last year that was a new low from the lows before not a new low from 1982 or 2002 or something a new no, low so since that 80 2008 it just top. retested the last top is all it did so from 2015 Richard, we're talk, you should stop talking here because i'm telling you you don't know what you're talking about here i will but it's just a line on a chart we can look at a chart afterwards we don't have a chart to put up you're mm. telling me we didn't make a new low over the year or two before. Oh, the last new low would have been in late 2018. Oh, okay. So 2192 was lower than that, right? So, so here's I'm I'm going to tell you what happened on the chart. You're looking your new low is from December of 2018 
to the yeah. quote new local low of March of 23rd, 20. 2020. That was a right. new low. Yes. After that is a new, new low. Over the 2018. Yes, it, it was a broadening wedge that yeah. broke out broke to the top. That That's a great way to describe it for you. Yeah. Audience. It was so, an expanding wedge. Yeah. So the next new low, if this was a top here. But the chart has no the history top, of other wet, like, high, Would be 2100. It'd yeah. be lower than that. But we did the high. same formation in 2014 to 2015, and it broke out to the top and never came back. And it well, that your happen. new the new low that, that you're talking about that, was a retesting Richard, of that top. could happen after we make this new low. I do not think that's going to happen, but that could happen. You're right about it. Could. Yeah. I, I'm just saying this comes first if the pattern don't say we haven't made new lows. We made new lows. It just shows you, Richard, to me. I'm just trying to say when you print money out of thin air, are you create what do what did we start out talking about? Productive investment, right? Is this productive investment to create money out of thin air? Well, throw it into people and expect they're gonna do something well, productive with well, it when you get to them for free. So let so what I'm saying is look Every at this. Every boom ends up going lower because it doesn't work. There isn't something for nothing. Unless you keep printing the money and making it worthless. And then That's the chart... something for nothing. Okay, then, then you're saying, then, then Richard, we have all been idiots for thousands of years. If governments just constantly printed money and gave it to people, none of us would have to work for a living and we'd all be rich. So That's what you're kind of saying the, to me. What I'm saying is the S&P 500 represents the actual productive GDP of the United States. No, it, present, it represents... A valuation no, no, the, on earnings. Not the price. Not the, the price, price. not the price. The actual companies. Not the price. The companies. The yeah, companies the company. is the productive stuff of the country. So right. regardless of what price it is, that's the only shit that actually has value here. It's this or the real estate. And it's overvalued right now. And I'm just saying it needs it's, to come down to real value. It's overvalued in dollars. But dollars... So. If you, if we just well, took the, if Richard, if you're not going to, you, you can't do this to me without giving me something to value it, value it in something. Instead yes. Of dollars. You can value it in gold or eggs or silver or gold? yards of land. Gold you can choose anything. Gold is volatile as stocks and it's not a it monetary did, model anymore. But when you, when you mix all that shit together, it balances itself out to the real stuff is worth something, right? So if you, if you measure a car and it's ounces of gold, it's roughly the same fucking price as it was in the 70s. If you measure a car and its number of cheeseburgers, it costs a McDonald's. That's because gold does correlate with inflation. Sure. Yes, it's, so, it's so I'm saying like, I don't care if you use the Big Mac index. In adjusted for inflation. If, I don't care if you use the Big Mac index, which the economist likes, or if you use gold ounces. Or, I don't care what you use. For inflation. You can adjust stocks for inflation I, just like you just did. I'm saying that when you place a trade on a, a – when you place a trade to make money – you're choosing your numeraire. You're choosing which pair you're trading. And the majority of trades that occur in this world that we live in are versus the dollar. And so yeah. people that trade the S&P 500 are trading the stuff that actually matters, which is the companies themselves that are productive, which is the S&P and, and, and they're trading. I hate to say versus that. the dollar. Here, Go ahead. And they're trading in the currency that actually matters, even if it doesn't tomorrow morning. Well, sure, but so You've so my so my these are these are the best companies we've got, and this is the best currency we've got. Do you do you use Bitcoin or no? Gold the dollar's great. Love the dollar. Dollar's great. So it's okay. the best well, currency the we've got on the planet, and, and it's the best companies. Everything for inflation. That's what I do. Yep. So we've got the best currency and the best companies, and you're trading them versus each other. And my my thesis, which is very simple, is if GDP doesn't change and the companies don't change and nothing changes but they just print money out of thin air, the chart is going to look like you're making lots, but in reality, you're not making anything. You're just making this fake number. And then when you go to use that fake number to actually buy other shit that's worth something, you'll find out that those other things went up in price too, and you didn't actually get ahead. So when the thing that you're making, you have to outpace inflation in the things you actually want. So if yeah. the thing you actually want is to buy shares in the, th the companies that are productive yeah. in the country you live, you've got to beat the S&P 500 with whatever you're doing in order to be ahead in the terms of shit you actually want. But let's get a little more real for a minute. What are you buying when you buy in those companies? You're buying their earnings. Dividends, but really earnings, because earnings can be reinvested and create more dividends. Mm, no, you're buying I'm, the greater I'm just full. making a point. Listen to me, okay? No one does stock buybacks. Who earnings, who, the total earnings of the S&P 500 is done since 2011, the first bounce, they've uh -huh. gone sideways. You're exact. They no. haven't grown. So sure. would you want to buy the stocks of companies that have gone up 
four, five, six, seven times when their earnings are flat. Only, only if, only that, if they keep printing the money. Printing money, pumping up financial yep. assets. So the bubble is in financial assets. I'm just telling you people, regardless of what you say, because I have to do my job here, Richard. If you're in <laughs> highly the same valued team. financial assets, that is the yeah. biggest risk. I would be in your I've, stable coins from what yeah. you described. Yeah. I would be in a 10-year, 30-year treasury bond. I would not be sitting I, in S&P 500 stocks. Sorry. I think dips okay. are in the game. You're I think they're legal. I think we did a bunch of them. Two years from now. I, I think dips are in the game. I think we have seen See, them. I'm not talking about a dip. I'm talking about... A, reval a reset to reality, which was what 29 to 32 was after the biggest bubble in history up until that point. If we if we were on a price chart that wasn't priced in dollars, I think you could get that. Have you studied bubbles? Yes. I think if you okay, were trading a price chart, if you were trading a price chart, not against the weak fake printed out of thin air dollar, if you were trading the S&P 500 versus real shit, some other index of some sort, but you, can't, you would you get a big dip. You would get a huge dip, but because you are trading against something that is fake and easily printed, the chart naturally curves up if nothing else changes because they just keep printing money. The, if they don't make any extra revenue, if they don't do anything better. It means it's overvalued. The stock market. It's, it's overvalued if they stopped printing, but if they keep printing, that chart will just continue to go up and you won't um, make. Hey, 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 Richard, Richard, Richard. <clears throat> Why mark Germany? I remember. You studied that, of course, right? Yes. Did they yeah. keep printing? They kept printing until it was worthless. Yeah, collapsed. yeah. The whole if, system got you can't sure. keep going by printing money out of thin air and expect to produce anything and grow. It's you create a problem but, that ends up. But their inflation oh. caused actual systematic failures, such as no one could afford bread. In America, well, you caused, can still caused, afford they bread. Caused their currency to collapse. Yeah, but which you created can, more need for money. They could print. print twice as much money as they're printing right now, and the economy would still survive. So I'm just saying, you can have dips, you can have big crashes, it's, but they're not going to be a dip. That with you right now, two All right. Weeks, in the 2022. Yep. I say stocks will be substantially lower. You say how much lower? Higher, or higher. Let's leave it at that. All right. And we'll talk in two years. And All I'm right. telling you, they are printing more money than ever in the last year, and stocks are going up slower, not faster. So overall, hey, so I think I think crypto is. I think crypto is a good spot to be in, whether it goes up or down. Anybody telling me that you can create something for nothing out of a bubble forever? Bubbles burst, and the bigger they are, the bigger they burst, and the more exponential they get, the closer. But you are look to at the look at the chart. Look at Amazon's chart. Look at Facebook's chart. They're silly. They're bubbles. But they've been bubbles for twenty years. So at some no, point you have to be like bubble. maybe no, bubbles no, got, reality. No, no, Richard, you're not looking at the charts. I'll look up a chart right now. I'm on trading view. You want Amazon you or what? See the big crash from October 2007 to March 2009. Give me the ticker. Tech stocks it. went down 78 percent. Amazon maybe more. S and P went Nasdaq. down 56 percent. There was a huge crash. All right, I'm on the Nasdaq chart. Popping over. I'm on the Nasdaq chart. The big dump that we just had in was in market. Feb 20. We had a dump in Feb 20. So in February no, no, of no. 20. Did you, October 2000, you said last 20 years. October 2007 to, to March 2009, the NASDAQ went down 78% tech stocks like Amazon. So it hasn't been going straight up for 20 years. It's only been going up since 2009 in a second bubble that's even worse than the first one that caused the crash 78%. That's what actually happened. If, so I'll just make a very simple observation. I don't care what chart you look at. They all point up and to the right. To be bearish with charts like that, you've got to have outstanding evidence right. and then, outstanding then, then, then timing. We're going to end this, Richard, right now <laughs> with our bet. In right. the 2022, yeah. 1,000 stable coins are probably worth nothing right now, but whatever. Whatever you want to bet, $1,000 into 2022 stocks are lower rather than higher. The S and P, the S and P five hundred SPY index will be the yeah. same or higher, priced in dollars. Be lower in two years. That's our bet. It's the end of Thousand bucks. Where I'm going to gauge it. End of 2022. Yeah. So like a year and eight, a year and seven months. I take yeah. that bet. Thousand U S dollars. Okay. All right. We'll end it because we're not going to agree. We agree on a lot of I things, accept it. which is good. It's been an, I, accept I am going to have. I got two big crypto friends down here in Puerto Rico. Nice. You live I'm in Puerto Rico. Hex, which may work to your We've got a ton of hexagons down in Puerto Rico. An absolute ton. 
ton. Oh, that's, they're all coming. Because they're all gold bugs, and they love that not paying tax thing. So, yeah. you know, uh, I'll put you in touch with a guy named Gary that has some nice uh, cars down there. Yeah, yeah, do email me. And I'm going to talk to these two people and have them check it, because Hex does sound interesting. So I, I think everything's overheated, like you say. I just think they can keep printing like assholes and cancel it. Well, you can't do... And you won't be ahead in real terms, but you'll be ahead on the fake dollar chart. You know what I mean? We'll see in two years. Cycle. Have you ever studied that? Which cycle? It doesn't matter whether it's heroin, crack, alcohol, coffee. People take... It takes more and more and more to get the same high. Sure, I know what you mean. Until but parabolas cancel that idea, right? Parabolas Crash, are the opposite. The pavement and end up in rehab. Only way it ends, death or rehab. But, it never ends going up forever. Never, ever, ever. It can't. When they print the money out of thin air, it can. Look at the parabolas disprove that idea. So I agree with you. More economic hey, mass is harder to push. It comes out of thin air. You take zero and you, <laughs> I don't care how bad you feel, you're going to immediately feel much better. You can keep doing that until you go to rehab or yeah. die. There's no other two solutions. No, no other two. You don't get higher forever and then go to heaven. I believe in the bubble, bro. I believe in the greater fool. Call me crazy. Up into the right charts. Only yeah. up. <laughs> we'll see you in, in two hey. years. It was good talking to you, man. Thanks okay, for uh, man. having now, a chat, this bro. This was a stimulator. I, I, I'm going to do some follow-up research. All right, man. Like Sounds it. good, bro. Goodbye, Harry. Okay. Ciao, man. Oh, harrydent.com. Yep. Get on my free newsletter so you know when I'm right. Hey, can I mention, uh, if you guys are watching, go to Richard Hart Win on uh, Twitter. 65K followers. Richard Hart on YouTube, like 50K. I invented a $5 billion cryptocurrency called Hex. Hex.com. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's about it. See you, man. Have a great day.